so I want 2.5% now. Yeah. Love your 2.5%. Yeah. We're all getting percentage if you get this stuff. I don't think he's going to get it. He's going to get it. Hello, hello. Welcome back to the Price to Sell podcast. It's your number one real estate podcast in Toronto. Powered by Neighborhood Creative. I'm your host, Matthew Campoli. And today, we have a wonderful guest. Wonderful. We welcome the real estate master himself. The best beard in the game, in my opinion. It's not bad. Mr. Buy with Ty, Mr. Tyler McClay. Thank you for coming, my friend. Hey, thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate being here. Humbled. I mean, you get some wild guests on here and some 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 big names. So definitely humbling to be in a, in a group with, with those names you've had in the past. So thank you. But none with a beard like yourself. Well, you know, we can we can try. <laughs> thanks for coming, man. So thank you. Give everyone a little bit of a brief bio as to who Mr. Tyler is, what you specialize in, and what makes you so special, because you are. Oh, well, thanks. <laughs> um, so yeah, I know my mother says so too, so thanks. Good, good. Um, so but yeah, matters. no, I'm, I'm Tyler. I've been uh, uh, in, the, in the business for about seven years now, third generation realtor. So my mom's been a realtor for over 40 years. My grandparents were realtors as well uh, in the area, so kind of grew up with it, doing offers at the kitchen table, stuff like that, and Very it was cool. always kind of in me. Never thought it would be a, a, a career. I wanted to be a money manager, finance guy, and then I realized how much time you got to spend behind a computer and numbers and all that stuff. I like face-to-face. I like people. I like to talk, educate. So uh, it seemed to be a good alignment for, for me. Uh, I did my master's at Schulich in real estate and which infrastructure. Is cool. Which is cool. 2018. You so got that's that fantastic. Background. I met some amazing people. Yeah. Uh, quality relationships that'll last a lifetime. That was fantastic. Did my undergrad in finance. Uh, last year we had a phenomenal year. Top 35 under 35. Saw top that. 2% in the nation. Which so is huge. We're, we're doing well. We're proud of ourselves. And now we've started the team. So I've got a team going, a couple guys on the team, and educating them, helping them. They're doing phenomen- phenomenally. Anthony, Daniel, awesome job, boys. Keep it up. Shout out to you guys. Um, done done a deal yeah, with Anthony recently. It. Yeah, yeah. Good yeah. time. The guy's Great a good time. guy. Teaching at Humber now, a little nice. bit, part-time. So that's a lot of fun. The next generation of realtors and teaching them, giving them some, some spin and some advice. But yeah, that's, that's me. I love it. This is the best, best job in the whole entire world. And uh, we just we love helping people find home, find investments, and... That's it. It's good symmetry awesome, of man. everything you want to do. And that's why I want to have Love you on because you've been like engulfed in it. You're like your family, the schooling part. <sighs> yeah, like yeah. for me, for example, I, stud- I have no ba- business background at all. I studied history and then I just found myself in real estate. And I feel like a lot of people you hear that a lot. take those routes. But you, you were like, you've been in, you had the Schulich real estate business background. Yeah. Your family's been in it your whole life. So you grew up with it. So like you truly. It's kind of meant to be guided yes, that way. You which know? Is, and it's, um, you know, it's, it's really cool because you have just. It's a good advantage to have too because you just you know your, your whole life right Great resources like my mother always there for, exactly. for questions and advice and learning yeah. from you know the best so that's a lot of fun even just growing up being in the office with her as a kid i'd golf with the guys in the office and you know get to know guys so even those relationships it's amazing we can talk about it more as we go yeah. on but relationships in this business are huge definitely huge 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 with with other realtors like yourself i yep. know we've done a couple deals together which is a lot of fun yep. and uh other guys out there so yeah Loving it. Good, man. So what areas do you focus on, you and the team? Uh, we're trying to transition more to downtown core now okay. that we've moved the office down here and we're living down here. So that's the focus now. But uh, all over the GTA, I mean, we've sold stuff as far as uh, Hamilton, Barrie, St. Catharines, where, you know, Oshawa, wherever our clients need to be, we've got the resources to, to be there. We've even sold stuff in the States and in Vancouver just through... Like I said, relationships are so important. Um, but basically, yeah, buyers, sellers, and heavy with the investors. We love yes. doing the investment mm-hmm. stuff, uh, big finance background. Uh, we love running the numbers and making those predictions. Yep. And, you know, I always say there's no such thing as a crystal ball in this business, yep. but I'm the next best thing. So that's the good, good. That's the vibe. So before we get into, um, so we're gonna talk, we're gonna get into your ex- expertise, especially with the market and and the trends and some of your your forecasts. Before we get, we dig into that, a lot of realtors uh, want to know like. Where do these bigger guys get their business from? Like, how do you acquire your leads? Where do you get your, how do you build your, your clientele? What's your main source of lead gen? It's a great question. I mean, I think it, it, it changes over time. It's one of those things like any business, right? It, it changes over time. It develops over time. Those sources change over time. Um, but I always tell even the new guys coming out of Humber, 
the main first first thing to do, I think, is work your network. Yes. And let everyone know that you're in the business now, mm -hmm. right? People that know you on a personal level, people you played soccer with, hockey with, went to school with, they know you, they know the kind of person you are. So you really got to work that network and kind of grow organically from there. Uh, a lot of my business comes from referrals and repeat clientele and yep. word of mouth. I mean, we've got great reviews on Google and, and people talking about us. Which and is huge. Sharing our name, which is great. And everyone needs to take advantage of that. And for the, the realtors, up and coming realtors out there, it's, it's, it's a hard conversation to have, or at least I found it tough to ask for the business. Yep. I was fortunate that a lot of it came organically, but now I've learned the power of asking. Yes. So keeping in touch with past clients, you know, just touch points. You got Christmas, you got birthdays. There's so many reasons to call someone. Uh, a mortgage change, stress test. It's a reason to pick up the phone and talk to people. So many people too, they like emails and texts and that's fine, but just good old fashioned phone call. Yeah. Hear your voice. It goes a long way. You know, they see your personality. So that that's huge for me. Starting out, yeah, I, I, just letting people know you're in the business. That's where the majority of mine came from. I think it's easy to get caught up in spending money and, you know, ads and, and you know, I had three calls this morning from, hey, we can help you with your ads online, this, that. People yeah. call you all the time. We're the easiest to sell to, really. We are. Um, but I think you just got to be careful with budgeting and, and spending and where your funds are going, especially starting out. But and for energy. me, it's referrals, energy too. There's only mm -hmm. so much time in the day. Yeah. And that's the craziest thing. It's easy to spin your wheels and mm -hmm. get caught up in all the different ways to get business. Yeah. There's so many ways and ideas out there, especially for the new guys. You know, uh, um, TikTok and Instagram and yeah. YouTube and uh, what's that new thing uh, where you can hear people talking to each other, the group. Shared. Clubhouse. 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 Yes. Thank you. So Clubhouse too. It's so easy to get caught up in all the ideas and forget to take the action. Yes. If there's one thing that resonates with you, bus benches or, or postcards or mail outs or farm areas, like one thing, just stick to it and, and do it. That's my advice. Yeah. Um, and that, that's how you're going to grow. Just start small and grow I, from there. Agreed, man. And just don't, uh, don't stress yourself out with all these different avenues. That's it. Find works. Start a podcast, right? Start a podcast. There you go. There's an idea. Not bad. <laughs> See, for you, it was like, I just kept hearing buy with Thai, buy with Thai. I'm like, what is this? I got, I got, I feel like I need to buy with Thai now. Right? Yeah. Well, yeah. hey, yeah, you're more than welcome. So if you, uh, if I ever need a realtor, I'm coming to you. There just you go. Saying. But yeah, no, that, that, that started <laughs> young. Like even in, in, uh, when I got my license, third year of my undergrad. How long you been in? Uh, it's coming up on seven years. Nice. Okay. I say seven years. I think this yeah. is the seventh year, but yeah, the buy with Thai thing just caught and I'll be at the park. I'll be golfing. Hey, bye with Ty. Like yeah. it's just, it's, it's, I'd it's say branding. branding is important in this business Very, too. And you've yep. done a great job of that. I see a lot of great stuff out there with branding. I think that's a, that's a big piece. You got to remember we're running a business here, mm -hmm. right? Sure. It's a career. Sure. It's something like that. But at the end of the day, you are your business. You are your brand dress for the part, do your hair. Every time you go to the grocery store, like my mom used to say, right? Uh, she'd go to the grocery store and she couldn't just go in track pants because she might see someone she knows. Yes. She'd have to get dressed up and do the makeup and do the hair, whatever you do. And uh, it's, it's all part of it. You just never know who you're going to meet, when you're going to meet them, who you're going to bump into. So you are your brand and you are a business. It's not just a, a, a job, yeah. if that makes sense. And that's something that resonated with me. That's something that you try to integrate. And it, it's exhausting. It's daunting. It's every single day. You're always on the clock. But it's the beauty of it too. So I love it, man. Dropping some bombs already. That's it. So we're yeah. gonna get into the real estate market so far. I know a lot of people are everyone everyone asks, what's going on? Why is this happening? What's gonna happen next? So obviously with COVID, we had no idea what was gonna happen because sure. we'd never really been through something like that before. So like you said, you get we don't have a crystal ball. But what um this this boom at the beginning of the year, what were where did this come from? So it's a great question. I could talk about this for hours, but I'll give you the I'll give you the Cole's notes, the main points. Um, basically, when I did my masters, one of the big factors was uh, densification, people moving to the city, shared resources, shared economies, and that was the heavy focus. And I think that is still the future and, and where we're headed. But COVID threw a big wrench into that bigger plan, mm -hmm. right? People wanted more land, people wanted more space, people wanted their own backyard, right? Yeah. You shut down amenities in the condos and things like that. So it created this kind of artificial and, and, and bit of a shift, I think short term, um, in terms of what people want. The value of a pool, you know, went crazy. The value of yes. land went crazy. It used to be that the young buyers, there's only so much time in a day, like we said, and now with dual income earners, husband and wife are, are, are working and the kids come along and you want to spend more time with your family. You don't want to be cutting acres of grass and shoveling snow and sidewalks and worrying about windows and this and that. So, so there was a, a trend towards smaller dwellings, uh, even condos and things like that. But that, that, that's kind of the way the market was going. As far as economy wise, what COVID did is the first thing I did is I looked at history. So kind of like, you know, obviously different things, but 
9-11, SARS, uh, other kind of global catastrophes, even the wars, right? Yes, yes. Uh, and how that affected the real estate market. So basically what happens is interest rates are reduced yeah. big time mm -hmm. in, in those markets. And what that does is it makes the value of borrowing or the cost of borrowing a lot cheaper. Mm -hmm. That allows people to borrow more for less and afford more house. So basically that kind of just injected some fuel in the fire in our market, which was already strong, right? Job growth, immigration, we just can't build fast enough. That's the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, COVID just made interest rates or forced us to drop interest rates, which was a huge, huge, major factor to our market. Um, and then yeah, people just wanting a sense of security at home. Right, uh, wanting to own, wanting to buy, wanting to get into the market. So I kind of knew, I don't want to say I knew, but I had an idea of what was going to happen, not to this extent with prices in the market, mm -hmm. but I had an idea that prices were going to go up and I was trying to preach that or tell my clients about that. And of course, there's always the uncertainty. We don't know for sure. Uh, second round or second, uh, what do they call it? Second coming of this COVID uh, thing, other right? waves. The waves, yeah. yeah. So. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the biggest thing is that interest rates drop in a market like this when there's some kind of global issue. And this is a whole nother level than um, even 9-11 or, or SARS was yeah. a lot smaller of a thing. Uh, but that's kind of what we see. Interest rates drop, money's cheaper, people can afford more, purchasing power goes up, and prices go up with it, especially in a supply-constrained market already. Yes. So it was just fuel to the fire. That's, that's basically what it was. And then do you think this so, is sustainable, this growth? No chance the growth is sustainable. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've already seen a bit of a cooling off. The way yep. I say it is a Ferrari is a Ferrari, whether you sell one or a hundred. Yes. Right? So people talk about transaction volume, cooling market. You see on BNN today, you're talking about a cooling market. For sure, it's unsustainable. People get tired. Buyers get tired of these bidding wars. And we saw the same thing in 2016. Um, you know, but basically, we are still super undersupplied from a market perspective from immigration numbers, even migration, people coming from outside the GTA, they wanna be in the city. Uh, as the offices open back up and people come back to work, the restaurants, the economy comes back in the city, we're gonna see that continue and that demand continue. Basically, it comes back to that we just can't build fast enough. There's just not mm -hmm. enough supply. And now you start talking about affordable housing, 25 to 30% of new units, they want to be affordable housing. So that removes more units from the market. A lot of these big boy builders, now they're building purpose-built rentals, yeah. right? aside from the affordable housing thing, uh, uh, purpose-built rentals, which again, the time it takes for these to hit the market, anywhere from seven to 10 years, from the minute you buy the land until someone's moving in, unlocking their door, yeah. average downtown, seven to 10 years. Now I gotta say, that's part of the reason why our market is so resilient and, and, and tough to changes is because of that constrained supply. From a lending perspective, from a building perspective, permits, it takes a while to get there. Um, so, you know, that's that's the biggest thing now is supply. You can put as many stress tests and, and mortgage rules and all these fancy things that, the, you know, they're trying to do. Uh, it's such a political play, right? Affordable ownership, that's a big topic for politicians, yep. right? So they all try to put their own spin on it. Biggest thing is build faster. Yes. Give the approvals to build. We need the supply. That's the only thing that's going to level our market. So I think investors can be confident in what they own and what they're buying that the market is going to remain rock solid here in Toronto and the derivatives of Toronto, yes. right, outside of there. Uh, but to your point, no, this increase we've seen is not sustainable, but when we start talking about inflation and things like that, value of the dollar decreasing, we're gonna see prices go up, but it won't be the real value of the assets. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be inflated. I don't say that in a negative term. Yes. I just mean you gotta get in before the value of the dollar decreases. Fair enough. And then we, <sighs> we are expecting a, a wave of immigration. Big time. Over the next three years so just to add to the demand big time huge right? targets up to 2023 they've released the targets yeah. and it's it's mind-boggling what we're anticipating here yeah and you know these people want to be in toronto they're skilled qualified educated immigrants yep. right uh so this is where they want to be yep and the people will say like you know what goes up must come down you know, for example, like crypto, you had that boom and then boom, it's gone. Stock market for whatever, you know. Yeah, crypto other, I still don't understand. That's yeah. just... <laughs> other other examples. But when you have these factors, like, for example, we just can't build enough. We have a low supply issue. Right. Plus all this, you know, for just another example, this immigration coming in, more demand. Um, when people say like, oh, like this is, the, it's going to burst. Things are going to drop by 15, 20%. I don't know. What, what's your take on that? I think it's funny because you could, you could probably Google Toronto real estate market up you'll find 100 articles. Toronto real estate market down, you'll find 100 articles. Yes. People like to talk about real estate. People are interested 
in real estate, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Especially our generation, young people want to get in the market. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? I've seen people even on Instagram reposting, oh, market's going to crash with COVID, blah, blah, blah. But why? You got to look at why. Mm -hmm. So it's like a big, big pot of stew, right? And a lot of these articles, they pick one thing, like the potatoes. Is that a positive or a negative? And they just harp on that one element, like interest rates. They're low, market's gonna go crazy, right? Yeah. Or you look at something like COVID, people uh, unfortunately losing jobs and, and, and you know debts increasing, so obviously the market's gotta crash. But the market is not derived from one or two or three individual elements, yes. right? It's a whole stew or soup full of ingredients. And if you, you know, make, if, if you exclusively look at one or two of those ingredients, you'll have a totally different idea. And I think we spend too much time focusing on one or two or three of those things, mm -hmm. especially in the news, because people love to talk about it. It's good news. Um, but it's, 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 you got to take a step back and look at the whole picture. So the fundamentals are there, right? We've yeah. got a rock solid political environment, uh, lending, you know, constrained lending requirements. Um, our economy is solid. Uh, people have jobs, you know, we're getting back here. There's, they, they talk about the roaring 20s. I think that's what's coming, right? Yeah. Same thing back in 1920, the, the original roaring 20s. This is what happened. People went out and they spent and spent and spent and spent and things just went absolutely nuts. So that's that's what's coming. But our fundamentals are, are rock solid, you know, immigration, yeah. job growth, employment. The, the fundamentals are there. So that's what you really got to focus on, not one or two. Not the sprinkles, yes. but the, 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 the cake itself. I agree. You know? Yeah, and, and I think these articles focusing on these little ingredients here, there, and really hammering them down is that's what's kind yeah. of messing with people's heads, especially ones who, you know, a lot of people are selling and renting. Yeah, um, yep. people have been doing that for years too. It's right? true. Oh, I'm going to sell now, I'm going to cash out, and I'll buy back in when things crash. Yes. You don't have a crystal ball, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of these people, I mean, not knocking anybody, but, you know, you're, you're a doctor, you're a dentist, you're good at what you do. Yeah. But what do you know about the real estate market and economy and you can't listen to, you know, Al Sinclair on CP24 and expect to be an expert on the market. Yes. You know what I mean? I think too many people, they, they think they're experts. That's the problem with now access to information. You read a couple headlines and you think you're an expert. Uh, I think that can be uh, a big negative. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, um, I taught karate for years, martial yeah. arts, third degree black belt. Should, I, should I take a step back? No, no, I I'm, like you. You're okay, cool. Okay. I'm getting but, scared uh, now. Yeah, no, you're a cool guy. <laughs> uh, but that being said, uh, my sensei at the time, he said, yeah. you know, you don't want this false sense of confidence, mm -hmm. right? You're at the playground. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm this, I'm that, you know, and that was never a thing, but I can do this. I can do that. Uh, and then you get your ass kicked, yes. right? You don't want that false sense of confidence, especially when you're, you're coming up, right? You think you know things. And I think that's a big negative in what we're seeing in the market today. People think they know things and they wanna wait and they wanna do this and that and they think they know, but you know, to a to a fault. Yes. Um, I think you gotta consult people you know and trust, mortgage brokers, realtors, mm -hmm. uh, lawyers, real estate lawyers, people that are engulfed in this industry, in this world. Listen to as much as you can, Not don't pick out one or two things, just broaden your perspectives, broaden your sources of information, I guess, yeah. right? And so. I, I think a lot of people fail to, like one thing I heard, and this stuck, stuck with me, but you gotta remember that real estate's not get, get rich quick, No, it's get rich slow. Yeah. So you can't never time the bottom. The common theme is get rich, right? Like yes, it's, it, it the is. The potential is there. So. It definitely yeah. is. So you can never time the bottom, it's just you gotta get in, and whatever happens, we ride it. Sure. But it should be a long term. Hundred percent. It's a right. long-term play. Some guys I know like to flip and this and that. A lot yeah. of the values in the land mm -hmm. now. Yeah. So it's harder to, to find those opportunities. Um, but yeah, big time. It's it, it's a it's a longer-term play. Awesome. For sure. I agree. So let's get into the future a little bit. Yeah. Cool. Um, so uh, talk, well, GTA specifically because the majority of our viewers are from Toronto. So I want to get into, you know, for example, our young first-time homebuyers who you know, are discouraged and have a hard time getting in. Yeah, yeah. And they never think they can, especially with, you know, what we just spoke about. It seems like the market's going to stay strong. Shout out to the espresso machine in the background right now. <laughs> seems like the market's going to stay strong. Prices are going to continue to grow sure, it's steadily. Daunting. Yeah. How does someone who just got out of school, maybe in, in, in debt from university, uh, still trying to find a job, how do they get in? It's a great question and a question that I hear often. It's a reoccurring theme. When I bought my first place, I was 18. Mm -hmm. And I had the money saved up from cutting grass and working summer camps and stuff like that. And what you needed down was a lot different. You didn't have to have 20% down for an investment property. I think I put down like 6% or 7% and the prices yep. were a lot different. But that being said, I couldn't qualify for a mortgage on my own. Mm -hmm. I had my father on 
title with me and he helped me qualify for the mortgage. Yep. So you can't do it alone. Yep. Do it with friends. Yep. Do it with relatives. Do it with your parents. Find someone like-minded, educate, and, and everyone can bring different things to the table. Maybe you have a money partner and you're the, you're the mind. Hey, I think Hamilton, for example, is a great opportunity right now. I'd love to be able to buy a detached house on the mountain. Uh, you know, th this is what I think I want to do. Do you have the money? Let's partner up. You be my money partner. We'll split it. I'll manage it. Go yep. from there. But, you know, partners, get three, four, five friends together, invest in something, get help from your parents, from your relatives, um, you know, t team up. Yep. Team up. That's my best advice. Team up. You know, don't don't wait. Find a way. Yes. There's always a way to find a way. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't want to encourage, you know, uh, even mortgages in a different manner, but there's options out there. There's privates. There's B lenders. There's different ways to get money, right? If you think it's a good opportunity, find a way. Yes. There's always a way. And there's resources here. Talk to Matt. Talk to me. Talk to people. There's always a way. But I'd say partnerships, parents, friends, family, you don't have to do it alone. I agree. Especially starting out. Right? That's why I did my first one too. Yeah. Run it out. Yeah. And the, for, you know, let's say a couple out there, they're looking to start their life and they want to live in the city, but prices are just insane. So a lot will be like, I can never, we can never buy a house, so we'll rent. What yeah. is a strategy that they can do? Not necessarily, maybe not buy Toronto, but any, what kind of tips would you give someone in that kind of situation? This is, this is something that I really like to, to talk about and share yeah. because I, I, you know, that's like saying I'd, I'd love to drive a Lamborghini today. Right, yeah. but there's stepping stones to get there. Exactly. You want to live in Toronto? Toronto's the Lamborghini, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody wants a penthouse looking over the water with a CN Tower view, like, you know, or or, or a detached house and wherever, downtown Toronto, core, Forest Hill, whatever, whatever you want. Mm -hmm. You got to start somewhere. Yep. It's a journey, right? So I think that your first property, even your second property, you don't have to love it. You have to like it. It's got to make sense. But you don't have to fall in love with it. You can make tweaks. You can change the lights, change the floors, paint, cheap fixes, right? Your furniture, whatever. But get in the market. Mm -hmm. Make that sacrifice. I think sacrifices are important, especially in this day and age with what we see on Instagram and this and that. Everybody wants everything now. Now, now, now. And you said it. It's a long-term game. Get in the market. Maybe you start with a one-bedroom condo. Maybe you stay at home and rent that condo out. Yes. Maybe you buy something in St. Catharines for now and you rent it out. You stay at home with your parents a yep. little longer. You don't have to move out right now. But, you know, young couples, for example, uh, rent a two-bedroom and rent the other room out. I don't know. Find a way. Yep. Find a way. You don't house need hack. a car. Some, house hack. Uh, find something on a transit line. Give up the car. Make those sacrifices now to benefit you later. Right. Yes. That's that's my biggest piece of advice. Go a little smaller. Go a little further out. Make the sacrifice. Drive a little further. If you go a little further out, drive a little further. Spend the time. Um, but just get into the market. Stop paying someone else's mortgage. Pay down your own mortgage and get in the market. And you'll be grateful that you did in three to four to five years from now. And then you refinance and you do what you want to do. A lot of my clients, they'll keep that first one rented out and buy their dream home second or third. Yep. But that's that's what you got to do. Like it, just don't love it. You don't have to fall in love with it. Just get in the market. Process. Can't stress that enough. Trust just the process. process. Trust the process. Exactly. Trust the process. Yeah. Now, so um, sticking to investments, uh, what's your take on pre-con or buying resale? I think it depends. It mm -hmm. depends on your position, depends where you're at. A lot of the pre-con options now, they've got more deferred deposit structures, it's easier to manage, no tenants to worry about, you just put your money down over the course of a year and a half, two years. Mm -hmm. A lot of them now, you can negotiate with them because of COVID, there's a little more out there right now, there's yep. a little delay with, with pre-con stuff. I know even some of them have delayed because of the cost of lumber and commodities oh, yeah. and copper and That's things like that. So, so you can negotiate with these guys too. A lot of people don't realize that um, with the deposit structures, but there's a time and a place, depends on the kind of investor you are. You wanna put your, I, I do both, mm -hmm. right? You don't need a mortgage for pre-con, so you put some money away, you forget about it for two, three years, exactly. you're in the market, mm -hmm. but you don't have to worry about tenants, mortgages, payments, mm -hmm. nothing, just the deposits. Resale I like because you're also gonna appreciate with the market, but you've got cash flow yes. if you're going to rent it out, right? Mm -hmm. You've got cash flow. So you're also in the market. You're going to appreciate with the market, whether it's pre-con or resale. But resale gives you that opportunity for cash flow. Exactly. Right? And there's a bunch of in-between. There's assignments. Mm -hmm. You can buy the last release. There was one at Young and Eglinton I just did. They got the approval for an extra four floors from the city. Oh, wow. So they just released those very close to the occupancy date. And I had a couple guys sneak in there. They were offering wicked incentives just to get them done. Development fees were paid for. There was no extra stuff. So there's things in between as well. But between the two, depends on your strategy, depends who you are, depends how much money you got, and qualification for a mortgage. And yeah, there's no right answer. They're both good in their own way. I agree. Just do one. Just do or one. Or two. Or two. Yeah, there you go. And then some, um, <laughs> what are some areas of GTA that Ty, uh, Tyler's bullish on? 
moving forward? Uh, I love the core right now. I okay. love the downtown Toronto core, core, core. And I'll tell you why. Uh, we're already seeing it come back mm -hmm. strong. I yep. was telling everyone, you know, y when everyone's moving out of the city and, and going to Barrie and these places that are yeah. going nuts, that's when you got to look at the reverse, the opposite, yes. right? That was look a great, where everyone great opportunity else is, to buy. is not looking at. So there's still an opportunity, mm -hmm. but downtown Toronto core, fantastic. And then you want to look at things where you see or, or markets where you see job growth, transit growth, um, an investment from a municipal, provincial, even federal level in some cases, right? What's coming? Where's the money coming from? What's coming? There's some markets that I don't particularly love because you don't see growth you don't see any investment from the city perspective um you know and you got to place different value on different elements transit universities uh office buildings those are all good things to look for um yeah i don't want to throw out specifics i mean i love st Catharines, i love hamilton i love nodes that are independent of toronto yeah right um barry is its own little node it is. i love barry Me too. hamilton is its own nodes and Catharines. things that are derivative of toronto are also good but if you're going to buy a derivative of Toronto, like North York, for example, you might as well be in Toronto. Yes. Right? Um, I like Oshawa. I really like out east. Really, really liking that yeah, these days. Lots strong. of investment out there. People are spending the money on the flips and the build. So, I mean, I think the main thing now is to just get into the market. With inflation, debt's going to become an asset, right? As mm -hmm. money decreases in value, you take on a $500,000 mortgage. If that $500,000 decreases at a factor of, I don't know, let's, let's just say decreases by 10%, your $500,000 mortgage is now 450000 Yes. hope that makes sense for everybody. But uh, basically, your money in the bank loses value, but the money that you borrow is basically losing value as well. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Is that making Yeah. So that's what I'm kind of playing on now. I don't care where you buy. Just mm -hmm. buy. Just yeah. get into the market. Don't let inflation run away. I mean, last year it was under 1%, uh, but we're looking at crazy inflation. And that's simply, if I have the time, simply because the government's got all this debt, right? And they've got three options. Lower interest rates, mm -hmm. which we can't lower anymore from where we're at. Increase production, increase output, which we're limited with COVID. Or you ramp up inflation to make the value of that debt devalued or make the value of that debt less. Yeah. So the government's got all this debt. You know they're going to ramp up inflation because of that. They want to devalue that debt. So take advantage of it. There's always different things you got to watch for. It's not like I said, that whole super stew, yeah. right? It's not one thing. So inflation is going to be a big benefit for buyers and young buyers now, but to get in now. To hedge. and To, to hedge, basically. Awesome. To hedge inflation, you got to hold a hard asset, whether yes. that's gold or silver, if you're not quite at a point to buy real estate. Yeah. Gold, silver, energy. Um, but obviously real estate, it's a hard asset. It's immune to inflationary changes, right? Yes. A good time to take out debt. I've just refinanced a lot of my properties. Um, you know, I want to take, accumulate as much debt as I can. I'm not yep. saying I'm right. That's just my take on it. No, no, these are good perspectives, man. That's, so, that's and then, you know, you, you reinvested into other things. Just, yeah. I, I don't want to hold cash right now. Awesome. No way. But I guess I got to uh, buy something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, as we near the end here, you've been fantastic. I didn't even shout out your jacket yet. It's absolutely incredible. Oh, thanks. My fiance picked it out for me. Shout out to you. Yeah. I think I got to pick up something similar. There you go. Cool. What, uh, what is next for Tyler and the Tyler McClay team? Great question. Uh, we love educating people. We want to continue doing that. Might start mm -hmm. some kind of a YouTube channel to awesome. something similar to what you're Very doing. Cool. I love yeah. it. I'm a, I'm a huge, huge fan of the podcast and of Matt. Um, Thank you. So I want to do something similar just to spread the knowledge and spread the wealth and share my ideas with people and you take mm -hmm. it at face value. But I, that's, that's what I want to do. Uh, continue to grow the team. So I've got two great, great guys now I mentioned earlier. So we're going to continue to grow from there. Uh, we're moving into a much bigger office space now just because we need it. Nice. So that's happening. Um, but yeah, just basically growth. We've got billboards coming in the city. So if you see us, let us know. So they're going to be King West, King East, all around nice. there. You know, you got to take that next Look step, the beard, make guys. that investment. <laughs> Look for the beard. And uh, yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot coming. There's a lot Beautiful. of the works. Hopefully... I'll be back on the podcast again you know at some what? point. I was you know? just about to that'd say be, that. That'd be great in my future. You do bring a lot of excellent knowledge, especially in the from an economic standpoint. So I could talk for hours about I, this stuff. I don't want to bore everybody with the numbers and the stuff. I mean, yeah. I, I want to be more exciting, and we could be more exciting. But yeah. I mean, that's that's the facts. That's real no, these estate. Are, so. This is great, great insight. And these are only yeah. thirty minute podcasts, but I'd love to do. We should do like segments moving forward. We bring on Tyler, and we talk about. You know what's going on at the time, and just for sure. updates, talks. updates, up. There you, you go. Got tie talks. Now you got tie talks. You heard it here first. There you go. Heard it so here where first. could uh, where could our audience find you? Uh, Instagram, Realtor Tyler McClay. You can reach out to Matt. He's got all my info, my number, my email address, TylerMcClay.com. We got a whole new website coming, so beautiful. Keep an eye on that. Uh, but yeah, TylerMcClay.com. You'll find my info. 
my number, my email address, whatever whatever you need. Awesome. You can reach out to myself, or a member of the team. Yeah. We're always there to chat and help out new realtors. We love, you know, I'm happy to just chat and yeah. lend some advice and knowledge. Again, I'm, I'm not saying I'm any kind of wicked knowledge here, but if there's something I can add, happy to. Uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, we're going to throw all your info in our links as well. Cool. But it's wicked. been an absolute pleasure my friend here. thank you thank, thank you so you much for coming for on. i hope i hope i added some value you definitely did hope you we did some stuff and impacted some people that's great but yeah you definitely did happy to well, be guys here. thank you you're welcome this is the price to sell podcast thank you again for tuning in hope uh I, I know you took a lot of knowledge away from this one and uh you know where to find us subscribe like comment share with your friends and we will see you on the next one take cool. care take care